There's a viewer of this channel who has been commenting quite frequently about the performance of this particular Class D amplifier module, which I reviewed a few months ago. And he's been quite adamant about the performance of it, and he's been talking about uh, some modification he's, he's done to it. So if you haven't watched my review of it, uh, I essentially ragged on it quite a bit for having a pretty bad 8-bit filter, and I uh, upgraded the filter by replacing a few capacitors, namely these with 100 nanofarad capacitors from whatever they originally was there. And I read it on solar joints, and uh, it started working relatively well. But this particular view has been, well, suggesting that this amplifier 8 performs even very high-end and particular amplifiers, and I do find those claims to be a bit dubious. Uh, so, while I haven't been using this module, and indeed I've nicked the little connecty bits of it, uh, I have now rigged it up for a little test. And unlike usual, we're not going to be using the HP3398 distortion meter, but rather, this lead here, runs off to the line input of my computer where we can actually view this amplifier on a proper spectrum analyzer. And that's because I'm pretty certain that any changes to the sound output character of this uh, amplifier uh, that you would notice by ear, if there are any, uh, are going to be due to the fact of a filter changing the frequency response of the amplifier because I've seen that happen with these Class D amplifiers in particular the treble tends to get a bit boosted when you use larger caps yeah. so what I'm going to do now is uh, I, we're going to jump over to the computer in just a moment and we're going to have a look at the white noise response we get out of this amplifier because it's being fed a white noise signal through this line there and we're going to see just uh, how its frequency response is in its uh, current iteration and then I'm going to do the particular modification that the viewer suggested uh, which seems to be to replace these 100 nanofarad caps uh, with 470 nanofarad caps and that supposedly improves the sound characteristic. Uh, I haven't really elaborated with this but I'm going to go out on a limb and place my bets that this is going to cause an increase of a relatively large amount in the treble this amplifier puts out. Uh, or it's going to be the other way around. We're going to find out, but let's go to the computer and have a look. Alright, so this is what the output of the amplifier looks like when we're playing a white noise signal through it. Uh, there's uh, you can ignore all of these little jaggies and uh, squigglies uh, along the line. Uh, that's just due to the fact that I'm using about, I think, 20 or 30 times uh, sampling to flatten it out. So it's going to be very crude. This is in order to get a usable update rate out of the system. Uh, but we can get a relatively usable frequency response out of it despite that. Uh, so we have the amplifier sitting pretty flat at... Uh, uh, minus 50 decibels here and uh, as we start to pass you know 5k 6k 7k something like that you can see the general trend starts to taper up a bit at and passes f minus 48 that you know 15 kilohertz or so and it uh, peaks at something like uh, minus 47 or so at you know just about 20 kilohertz so we have a slight bias towards treble on this amplifier, which we saw in the review, and it's not a big deal, it's relatively flat otherwise, and, you know, usable. Uh, but uh, what I'm going to do now is just to pause this footage and uh, do the modification that the viewer suggested to the amplifier, and we'll have a direct comparison uh, to this waveform to see what kind of a difference it makes. So, back in a moment. And we are pretty much seeing exactly what I was expecting. Uh, we are now, uh, we are still having all the low frequencies sitting quite steadily at around minus 50 decibels full scale. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're starting to rise just a bit. Um, yeah, it's that, you know, somewhere around 5 kilohertz, slightly below 5 kilohertz. We're starting to ramp up just a bit. But this time we're crossing the minus 48 mark at, uh, you know, 10, 11k, something like that. Yeah, about 11k. 
and we're passing minus 47 decibels somewhere around the 15 kilohertz mark. What's that? Yeah, that's 15 kilohertz right there. So now we're at 3 decibels at 15 kilohertz rather than 20. And at 20 kilohertz, we are pretty much up to uh, uh, 4, almost 5 decibels. So, yeah, uh, we are by increasing the size of these uh, filter capacitors, you're basically just uh, adding more high frequency content uh, to your output. You're just uh, uh, turning up the treble knob, as, so, so to speak. And with a you know, center frequency of about 20, 30 kilohertz, and we're uh, cutting off uh, as a rate at 20k because we're sampling at 44.1k. So we can't really see any higher frequencies than that at the moment. But uh, it's, it's a bit irre irrelevant since we are we're just talking about audible stuff anyway. And I just stepped up the sampling frequency to 96 kHz to get a bit of a more of a peek as to how it would perform and it seems the amplifier itself is rolling off very steeply past 20k. That uh, is entirely in line with what I've seen when I've tested them with the 339A as well. I think I might be misremembering. Uh, I'm not at all certain as to the accuracy of this testing setup above 20 kilohertz. It's very crude, so uh, this is going to be a ballpark number. Uh, but uh, we are still seeing the same uh, high frequency or high audible frequency gain there of almost uh, of um, oh, almost five decibels. So as far as that's concerned, we are probably still reasonably accurate. But yeah, take this plot with a grain of salt. So there you go. Uh, the conclusion to be drawn from this, uh, if any, is that, uh, <laughs> uh, as one would expect, changing the output filter on a Class D amplifier changes the way it behaves, even audibly. And, uh, you know, 5 decibels is very, very audible. Anybody would consider that to be audible. That's almost the entire range of some tone controls. So that's a bit of an interesting tidbit of information, the filter. It doesn't just affect the inaudible suppression of, you know, super high switching frequencies. But uh, as far as fidelity is concerned, in this particular case, replacing the 100 nanofarad caps with 470 nanofarad caps is not going to give you a better output. Uh, it's going to give you uh, the same quality output, except you get more treble. So it's a question of taste, but from a pure signal purity standpoint, you are degrading the signal. And if you're wondering how I connected this bridge tide amplifier up to my computer, that's a little trick to it. Uh, for starters, I'm running it off of battery power on these two leads, but since the output is swinging both positive and negative, uh, I'm just tapping the output of the amplifier off from ground and one of the speaker terminals. Uh, this gives me a DC offset of about 6 volts going into the computer, but that's within the rating of input cap, so I know it's safe. And that allows me to just kind of cheat and not use a proper front end, even though I'm just feeding a normal consumer grade sound card. A little useful tidbit there. So, thank you for watching. Not much more to add to this. Cheerio. Tack Vegas. Vad fan förstår vi sig. Ja, nu stannar den för den ska ta micken. Ha ha ha, sug en kuk. Tänker den här faktiskt vara sönder. Sluta. Ja men va.